Hello and welcome. Lovely to have you along with us, especially to new subscribers. Today obviously is a garden week. This is the first full week of October, last week being the fifth Monday of September. So this week is obviously a garden week and I've got some videos to show you of the things that I did in, on the dry days last week. Yes, I only had one proper full dry day that I could work in the garden last week. So I took the opportunity while I could. <clears throat> so I'll show you those in a minute. But um, it's raining today. It will be raining the whole week. We might have a few dry patches, but it'll still be cloudy and damp, even if it's not raining. Um, but most of the week we have rain, which is not a bad thing. This is autumn after all. And it is a small price to pay for a beautiful Welsh countryside, which wouldn't be so green without the hills and the rainfall. So I'm grateful for that. And yet even, I mean, you can see now, even though it's a dull rainy day, the garden and the green plants just makes it so much more bright. And there's even still sweet peas around. So, you know, it's not all bad, but I want to show you something this week has started with a little bit of a, not quite a bombshell. Okay. Look at that. See the water drip in there? Yeah. And the wet patch on the ceiling over there, all the way across. And the paint running, bubbling on the wall can't really see it that well on this camera but it's not good not good at all and wet patches on the floor so it looks like this bathroom being the extension that was built onto the original part of the building and there would have been a small brick shed on the side of the building but it was obviously demolished and a proper extension for a bathroom put on as an adapted bathroom but oh Look at the drip in there. But it's obviously where this extension has been put onto the original building. There must be a problem with the flashing. But if you look at the building from the outside, from the street view, there's a lot of the mortar in between the bricks that has been blown out because it faces southwest where we get a lot of wind. And I think the wind has battered the mortar in between the bricks on that side of the house because it obviously needs repointing. There's a lot of mortar missing. And I'm wondering if above the flashing where the extension joins the wall, the mortar might have been blown out. Well, I don't know that. I don't, I'm not an engineer <coughs> or a builder. So I've tidied up in here a bit and it's obviously the floor is getting really mucky because it's just waiting between the dog coming in and us doing gardening and coming in and and all the rain out there, it's not going to be very clean for long. There's my box of denim that I'm going to be chopping up to make covers for the settees in the living room. And it's a, this little space by that door, because this is a through road from the front to the back of the house, um, but we never really use it. And it's become a little cubby hole for the ironing board and even the mop and bucket and the, you know, just a broom cupboard really. But I shall move that out of the way because the workmen will have to do that. And they're coming tomorrow because I phoned our council because this is a council house they're our landlord um and they're coming tomorrow to to check that out and see what can be done and what the damage is oh, hopefully that will all be done soon we'd have to worry about slipping on a wet floor but oh my look it's the paint is bubbled it's come off the door frame can you see that it's all bubbled and peeling off Ah, and it's come right in there. So this is actually the original brick wall. So if it's coming through there, that might not be from the extension. Maybe there's a leak in the bathroom because that's directly above the kitchen. But then why would the ceiling be wet over there? Hmm, we shall see tomorrow and I shall let you know how we get on with that. I'll let you know what it is anyway. Not that you're truly interested <laughs> in the silly things like that. But, oh, look there too. Oh, that's not quite damp though. 
yeah, we'll deal with it. We'll sort that out. But that's another little thing greeting us tomorrow. Well, today and tomorrow because I've had to clear this lot out. I've got some tidying up upstairs to do. There's a bunch of stuff I've sorted there to go through the skip. So yes, we're very, very busy. It's a busy time of the year. In this house, it's always a busy time of In between the showers. I've been absolutely crazy busy trying to get as much done. Look, here comes the rain again, so I'm going to try and get some listen <laughs> it timed me it's waited for me to come out the door as you can see i have planted leeks today i've planted half this bed of leeks and the other half of onions i've still got to put the garlic in the end there but i've also planted leeks in between all of these plants because the nepalese cabbage or mustard and the lamb's lettuce I can harvest in between anyway so I'll be putting some beetroot in between all of that and when the chard is big enough I'm going to line the edge outside of the bed along the with chard because this when I've been able to strengthen the um, the hoops a bit more with some cross canes I'll be putting the um, Enviromesh on there as well just to protect them from leak moth the rest will have to fend for themselves that's why i'm leaving it as a polyculture in between and here as well i have put the leak the um the kale in the ground because they were ready to go in in between the um the broccoli or calabrese but there is still also some lamb's lettuce and um mustards in there <coughs> pardon me so i'll harvest them as they're ready most of them are ready now as far as the lamb's lettuce goes and i've put leeks in between as well so that will help if this is also going to be covered all these stakes that i've put in have to have something to protect the tops of the stakes so that they don't tear through the netting because that's going to have netting as well both to protect the leeks and the kale i've also started to put some framing around for the apples to be trained as they go so that'll be it'll be really nice when I start in the spring seeing the new growth coming up and I can train them up and I know it's not a permanent solution these canes they are only temporary I'll strengthen them a bit more later and um, hopefully Within a few years, those apples won't need canes or support in at all because they'll be interlocked and grafted into each other, actually. The grapes are losing all their leaves already, the grapevine is. That nasturtium is just sprawling everywhere, but with the very first frost, it's going to die off. So that's what I've been doing today. And I've made some plans. As I told you, I was going to make some plans to... Um, as to where I'm going to put what. I was planning on moving the corn to this bed over there next to the cover and then I thought um, no it can't go there because that is my southeast facing spot where this the plants on here and the grape and they all get the south facing that is south facing in that direction so this cover gets all the south facing sun so no I can't put the corn there so I decided okay it, they were there last year they're there this year and next year the corn's just going to have to go there so i will have had to harvest all the leeks and beetroot and chard because chard's also going in there by the time corn goes in there next may end of next may no yeah mid middle of may next year hopefully if the weather plays the game and then this has got obviously the onions in because this is just getting me a head start for spring they're not going to do anything over winter as long as they just get established before the end of November and I can just protect them more with a bit more mulch and obviously the Enviromesh which is not much of a protection but it's something and then next year the beans I'm going to in the middle of the bed along the middle of the bed where the corn is now I'm going to put the, the um, structure for the beans the climbing beans and on either side of that will go beetroot and other root vegetables so beetroot 
um, parsnip, what else? I'll come up with something else on root vegetables. I'm a bit limited on space. I think for, for spring, when I put new kale in in the spring, yeah, they'll have to go in pots because there just won't be any place for it because this bed next year, that on that side of the cover, that's going to be potatoes because next year I'm putting them in the ground. I didn't get enough out of the tubes and they're in our compost bins anyway. So that bed will have to be for potatoes. And as for sweet potatoes, well, I am going to try and experiment something because you see these runners? I'm going to move that over further into here under the cover to protect it over winter. But those runners apparently will layer. So if I at strategic points put the rest that on pots of soil, I'll see if it will layer and start sprouting roots and then I'll have plants for next year ready. If, if it takes root before December, then I can overwinter them indoors in the house. Once the carrot, these carrots are almost done, these need thinning out, so I'll have some carrots by Christmas. But once they are empty, I'll be putting salads in there. So I can still have salads for the winter. These plants, all I mean the house plants will all go back in the house. This one, the African violet, the poinsettia, the fern, they'll all go back in the house over winter. And maybe even some of the herbs, I think, will go on a windowsill indoors. See if I can keep them going for longer. The bergamot, I'm going to transplant into bigger pots, obviously. Hopefully they'll come back next year. That rose that a friend gave to me is growing really nicely. So that's all right. That point set here will go back in the house. And look, our one and only passion fruit absolutely diabolical no idea what went wrong with that but it's growing so next year I'll be training this in a different direction maybe anyway let me show you the front garden and today I got some ornamental cabbages because they're so pretty and they will flower they'll stay that color hopefully throughout the winter actually because they're a good winter plant um so that would be really nice for a little bit of color in this corner because this corner is a little bit dull that is over there it's a little bit dull can't wait for the camellia to start to really grow it's bigger than it was last year when i put it in in autumn last year and it's just or was it spring but it is growing slowly i might have to feed it a bit more and give it a bit more manure or compost or whatever and um, the cotoneaster as well so that as they grow and the berries and the flowers come there'll be more color there through the winter but for now it's a very dull spot so those cabbages will make a difference and I mean the, the carnations are flowering they've still got flowers on them I did manure around the what's left of the rhubarb and I manured because I went, I went, when I was out, I needed to get some compost, but nowhere I went in my journey had compost. They were all sold out because they're retail shops. And so the only other place I could go was a little garden center, which was on a circuit that, I was, that we were driving. Because I like to do circuits so that I save both fuel and mileage. Um, so this little, it's a very small independent little garden center with really lovely plants and they had both manure and compost but the manure worked out cheaper and I didn't have enough in the budget for the compost so manure it was and it was a fresh journey home but the roses and the Eliagnus as well as the aronia berries and the Asa have been mulched oh and the um, fuchsia they've all been mulched and as well I finally got to put in my bulbs and for now the bulbs I've put crocus in along here in between the row but they're at the foot of the roses and they're in that corner and along up to the aronia berry over there I have put the crocus because they dwarf crocus so they're around the edge and I'm never going to put anything that's going to drown them out on the edge and they're short plants so they'll be all right on the edge there by the rose 
along there by the rows and the arches I have put the I've got some blue parrot tulips and some mixed hyacinth so they're in there and on the front of the arch over that side by the rows on the other side of the compost heap I have put the daffodils and what I'm really 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 happy about I'd love to go out there but it's really wet just there where the sonetti is the seedlings all over the ground there have sprouted so I hope they survive the winter what I'm going to do as an insurance policy for the sonetti is some of those seedlings those little shoots I am going to pick out and pot them on and overwinter them under the cover just in case those die off in the winter. I'm really glad that the um, ladies bed straw has spread along there so hopefully I can gather some seed and as, a, as another insurance policy just in case they die off over winter. They did all right last year and the south heel has died off because obviously that's in uh, bi biennial so this year they flowered and they've died off but there are new little bits of south heel popping up in places so hopefully it just keeps you know staying there the lemon balm is overwintering already it's dying down and i need to clear the comfrey away from it anyway the yellow lilac has survived the transplant because it's got new shoots on it so that'll be good there's a bright brand new leaf on that acer over there it is so bright it's luminous i can see it from here but it'll lose it all for the winter the wisteria is getting a nice thick trunk on it already this year it's gone really fast so to stop the wind blowing that trailer well over i am going to have to chop it because that needs trimming and pruning back now the wisteria and all the long tendrils I will keep and weave into a wreath that'll make a nice wreath for the winter so there you are that is how far we've got on the garden so far and I'm very pleased that the heather has actually started flowering again that is great so that is the update for the front garden anyway I hope you enjoyed that update It's been lovely having you along with us. I'm not going to bother asking you to like, subscribe and share and comment. You know you're welcome to do that anyway. And I don't like doing that. It just sounds so too professional to be a laid back, chilled thing. I don't like doing that. But you know you can anyway. I might just put it in the description box if anybody ever reads it, what's in the description box. Ooh, I've got a few more little gherkins come in. Let's hope they grow just a little bit more before the weather turns and I can have them as well. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, about six more little gherkins on there. Might get a little bit more. I'll give it a feed and see what we can get out of it. There you are. Have a lovely day, everybody. I shall speak to you again soon. And next week's video will obviously be a craft video. I don't know how much I'll have to show you because this week has obviously been taken up. By sorting this lot out. Take care everyone. Bye bye.